So in this video, I want to show you how you can update your or install Rasmium for Robots image on your own SD card. So you have a couple of different options if you want to use the Dexter Industry software. We highly recommend that you do use it. It has all of the drivers and software examples um, and a custom operating system that makes the robots that we sell very easy to use. You don't have to buy it from us. You can download it from free. We have a few ways to do that. Um, and I'll walk you through how to do that. And I'll walk you through how to take that software you download and put it on an SD card um, so that you can run, say, the GoPi Go or the GrowPi or the BrickPi uh, uh, without purchasing the SD card from us or update an SD card that you did purchase from us. So to begin, you'll actually need a few things. We've got directions on how to do this. Um, I'm doing this first on a PC. If you go to dexterindustries.com backslash how to, you'll see that we've got a couple of handy how to's on here and there's one called install Rasbium for robots image on CD, on, on an SD card. So if you click on that, you can see these directions written out and I strongly recommend that you go either with the video if that's what you prefer or if you prefer uh, reading it, then we have the same directions sort of outlined right here. So we'll start with a four gigabyte SD card. That's the minimum size SD card that you need to begin with. Um, and you'll need a some sort of micro SD card or SD card reader. If you bought it from us, it always comes with in a jewel case with this uh, SD micro SD card adapter. You'll need a reader and a writer for your computer. Mine has one built directly into the hardware. You can find them very inexpensively um, and SD card adapters that fit into, say, your USB ports for a PC. Very easy to get. So the first step will be to download the Raspbian, uh, Raspbian image from Dexter Industries. We've got it hosted on SourceForge, and we've also got it hosted on Google, um, Google Drive. There are two sets of links here, but if you click on them, they're gonna take you maybe to SourceForge, and you can go into uh, files and you'll want to download the latest. Right now we still officially have uh, 2015 320 up there, the March 20th version, but under beta we have the very latest version which is a November 2015 version. I'm going to download this RAR file and it's a um, RAR is a compression just like zip and you download that to the hard drive on your computer and then unzip it. I've already done that, uh, just so that you don't have to watch me download a few giga or 1.1 gigabytes. And I've downloaded it to my desktop, and I've uncompressed it with uh, whatever software you like. Usually, Windows comes with some native uncompression software. Um, some people install WinZip as well; that works just as well. And it should extract to a file called 2015. Um, 1109 Dexter Industries Wheezy .img. So the name of the file extension is .img. And this file is about four gigabytes or so. Just about the size that we'll put onto the SD card. So once you've unzipped that, the next thing to do is uh, connect with your SD card. I'm gonna put the SD card into my uh, PC and we'll see it pop up. It's the sound of the SD card going in. And you'll see that boot, it's, it comes up as boot.i. And if I double click on that boot.i, I'll see some files. Yours may look different depending on the version. Um, and it may also be blank, but I'm 100% sure, and you wanna be 100% sure that you know the disk letter. So in this case, I know it's i. It's the one I just put in. Um, and the next step, what we're gonna do is overwrite that entire disk that we select. So it's really important that we select the right disk. So I've got the SD card plugged in. On the website directions, you'll also notice that we point you towards a program called Win32 Disk Imager, and this is for your PC. You can download this, and we have a link on our website where to find it. You can also just Google for Win32 Disk Imager. Uh, it takes a minute once you start it to turn on, so I've 
turn it on before so the video goes a little faster here. But you'll suddenly be, um, when Win32 Disk Imager comes up, the first thing you'll want to do is turn on your, um, uh, uh, select the image that we just downloaded. So, here's Win32 Disk Imager. I go ahead and select the file, the IMG file that I just extracted. And that takes me, I'll go to my desktop where I stuck it, and I see this 2015.1109 Win32, or sorry, Dexter Industries.img, and I select that, and you'll see it pop up here. Now, one of the things that you can do is if you click on MD5 hash, that is a way to check whether the entire file was actually downloaded. So sometimes with large files, files can be corrupted. You'll notice that in the same directory where we downloaded that image file, there are two files uh, that come along with it. One is a PNG. I've just put them over here on my desktop. And that's a shot of what the MD5 hash looks like. And then one is also a text file, and that has this hash that's, uh, that's generated. So you see MD5 checksum, and then it's got this very long letter uh, slash number combination. What you can do is if you select the file and you click on MD5 hash, uh, it'll take a few minutes, but the software will just generate a number. And if your number looks like this number, then you have the entire file. Uh, it's a, important if you want to troubleshoot it or if you have a bad internet connection, you can double check that. Not necessary to do every time, but if you're having trouble, one thing to know. So once we do that, we've got, the, we've got our image file selected. Um, maybe you've run the MD5 hash to make sure that you have the entire file. The last thing you want to do is select what device. You see right here it says device. We'll select what device we're going to write to. And if we go back over here, remember we put the SD card in and we saw that the I drive came up. The SD card is on the I drive. We'll go ahead and select I. And you notice that I've actually got other files. My C drive on a PC isn't showing and that's the Win32 disk imager just being nice and making sure that I can't overwrite my main hard drive. But you can see I've got actually two other drives attached. So I've got the D, the L, and the I. Now, so that's why we want to be 100% sure that I am selecting the SD card drive. So I know it's I because I saw it over here. I'm going to select I. I'm going to take a deep breath and just double check that one last time. And all I need to do now is hit write. And once I hit write, I'm going to write the entire image this IMG file to that iDrive, the SD card. I hit right, it'll say, are you sure you wanna do this? Because even the software knows it can be a little dangerous. I made sure it's the I labeled boot file and I'll hit yes. And you'll see a couple of, you'll see that um, the file explorer just disappeared because the iDrive just went offline as I write the entire image to it. And you can see we're moving the, um, we're in the lower left hand corner of this, we're starting to write the uh, image data. And you can see that slowly and steadily, two, three percent, we've started to get the whole thing done. So that'll take a few minutes to run. Uh, depending on the speed of your SD card reader, it <clears throat> might take more than a few minutes, but uh, as long as it doesn't lock up and stop, um, you'll be fine. So. I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording here just so that uh, you don't have to watch me burn this entire thing, but pretty much does this, this thing you see right here uh, for the next few minutes. Okay, so we're nearing the end of our uh, SD card burning here. You can see we're at 98%, 99%, still running, and we'll get a quick message in just a second. There we go. The write was successful. So you should see this dialog pop up from the Win32 disk imager. And once you see that write is successful and it's okay, then you know you're ready to eject your SD card and put it into your Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna hit okay and exit out of Win32. And I wanna just show you one more thing. I, I'm ejecting the SD card right now. I'm gonna put the SD card back in. And you'll see a couple of files and just continue. This is this is not a problem. 
Uh, don't know where it comes from, but um, the SD card doesn't mean the SD card's corrupt or anything's wrong with it. I'm going to continue without scanning and open up the file manager real quick. And let's take a look at that boot. Now, we have a couple of interesting things. Whoop, where'd it go? A couple of interesting things going on here. But you can see these files, including host names uh, with no extension, are in there. And that indicates that it was successfully written. Got a folder of overlays and some other stuff that is really crucial to the Raspberry Pi operating system. So once you see that, you have a successfully burned SD card and you can put it into your Raspberry Pi and you'll have the latest and greatest uh, Dexter Industry software.